Oh, okay. I was caught there. I was actually chatting with, with Prof. Prof, say what you just said behind the scenes. <laughs> that made me start laughing. What did he say? <laughs> uh, well, I said your uh, program is um, a wonderful one. Um, you are doing so much, you know, educating the public on, um, you know, the, the you know, finance and economy. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, and that's a major contribution in the area of um, financial literacy and even the financial inclusion we are talking about. Thank you very much. Yes, Prof. Uh, the part that actually was cracking me up was that you said number one yes. for you and your colleagues that are professors too. Oh yes. Oh, we don't <laughs> we don't joke with this program. Wow. Yes. Wow. That's so good. Thank yeah. you very much. You've made my day and my yeah, weekend. Now, Prof, let me come to you. Now we're mm. talking fiscal and monetary policies. How important for someone? Let's let's um, uh, distill it a bit. And I want you to distill this with like forty-five seconds. What is fiscal policy? What is monetary policy? And how important are these policies to the economy in terms of real GDP and inflation? I've made it easy for you. Yes, you made it easy. <laughs> so you are taking me to the classroom. <laughs> the fiscal policy um, is, is about um, uh, well, what the government um, is doing mm. to uh, achieve some macroeconomic um, objectives. Um, we have mac macroeconomic objectives, mm -hmm. of course, you know, real GDP growth, um, low unemployment, and um, uh, low and uh, stable um, inflation. So these are macroeconomic goals. So fiscal policy refers to the use of um, principal ta taxes and um, spending and um, public debt. These are the three uh, instruments of, um, you know, fiscal policy. Um, how does government you know, combine them, you know, to bring about these macroeconomic goals. Now, on the part of monetary policy, uh, the focus is on um, trying to control the volume of money, trying to control the direction of credit, mm. you know, in an economy, again, using monetary policy tools. What are these monetary policy tools? You have the bond market oppression, you have the, um, the policy rate, that's the monetary policy rate, the cash reserve ratio, the liquidity ratio. You know, all these are monetary policy tools at the disposal of the central, central bank. bank. Yes. Okay. Um, in the past, in previous years, and it was so bad under this last administration that it, we did not see coordination between fiscal and monetary policy. Yes, absolutely. Are you seeing a semblance of coordination now? Or uh, are the two angles, are they doing theirs separately and giving us, making us feel that there is a coordination? Yes, I, I think you, you're very correct. In the last uh, dispensation, we mm -hmm. saw a lot of, um, you know, uh, working at um, cross, you know, purposes. Um, we uh, central bank would try to, um, you know, tighten monetary policy as it were, reduce the volume of money in circulation. On the part of the fiscal authority, we also saw uh, some fiscal, um, if you like, you know, injections, fiscal mm -hmm. surprises. So that was, of course, making di difficult the work of the uh, central bank. It, the, it was, there wasn't really this um, coordination. And again, on the part of the central bank, we saw the central bank, um, uh, in a way, or in a sense, abuse the use of uh, ways and means. Uh, because ways and means, again, uh, the huge ways and means that came into the system uh, contributed you know, to the inflation, um, inflation situation we have uh, today. So uh, at present, I see some coordination happening um, uh, in the sense that um, there is a presidential committee on fiscal policy and tax mm. reforms and this committee is um, um, uh, working closely with the uh, monetary side to also see how to bring about um, stability in the, the macroeconomy. So I see some, step, you know, some coordination, especially given the fact that the people at the helm of affairs um, the person in charge of fiscal policy, the Minister for Finance and Coordinating Minister for the Economy, as well as the Central Bank Governor, um, you know, they also have uh, some informal relationships. So that, you know, in a way, is also helping to solidify this uh, coordination. Mm. I want to ask a very tricky question yes. now, because when we talk about fiscal policy, you just mentioned Minister of Finance. Yes. Where is the role of the Minister of Budget and Economic Planning? Yes, that's mm, also because, within. Yes, uh, yeah, it should some, be within. You know, in some climes, in yes. some countries, and we even had it um, um, until recently. Uh, the the two are actually merged. Mm. You have um, the Minister of Finance, um, you know, Budget and National Planning. Remember, we had even had it in yeah. the last year. So it's actually one. Um, is it, is meant to be, uh, you know, they're meant to sit in one place. By the way, remember too, 
that the budget is a major exactly. fiscal... Exactly, for policy so, instruments. Yes, policy, yes. policy instruments, yes. Uh, yes. So they're actually together. Um, that they are separated now doesn't mean that they're not uh, you know, work, working together. Mm. I understand yes. that. But now that they are separated, do you see a better economic planning for the country? Because now it's Ministry of Budget and Economic Planning, yes. which still falls under fiscal policy, yes. which is talking about the programs, the policies that government will put together. Yes. Budget 27.5 20, trillion is a fiscal policy. Oh, yes. Tinubu's budget of 27.5 trillion for 2024 is a fiscal policy. Absolutely. So, so how do you do you see us having right economic planning with Atiku Bagudu now in charge of that ministry? So yes. now it's been divided. Yes. Yes, of course. And um, um, Andrew is, is like don't the treasurer. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, but let's also don't forget that we have a minister uh, of finance. Who is also the coordinating Coordinator minister the for the economy? economy yeah. you know. So again, that gives him, uh, if you like, um, a helicopter view of um, all the relevant um, uh, ministries, including Ministry of Trade uh, and, investment. and Investments. They are all, you know, within the, uh, if you like, remit of mm. um, you know, fiscal policy. Mm. Yes. Okay. Now let's take a look at President Tinubu's one trillion dollars. Economy. I guess you would have seen that. Yes. And he's mentioned that in several fora. Yes. What kind of fiscal policy and monetary policy coordination uh, does President Tinubu need to achieve that one trillion dollars? Um, yes. Economy? Yes, Nancy. I was I was talking at an event um, recently in Lagos. Um, that was two days ago, and I said, one trillion dollar economy. The the best way to uh, you know envisage that is to say. Um, uh, if you look at our GDP today, um, let's even assume that it's $450 billion, uh, even with the devaluation. Mm. Um, now, $1 trillion means you, you plan to double it. Mm -hmm. You dream to double it, okay? Yeah. Within the next um, yeah. uh, six years, we're already in 2020. Uh, 2023 is already gone, okay? Now, what that means is that you intend to have achieve 100% growth. Now, if you divide 100%. Oh, I see where you're coming yes, from. Yes, if you divide it by six, I that gives you like uh, maybe 16%, 16, yeah. 17%. So it, 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 that's why some people think it's really unrealistic for us to say we'll be, we'll do, be able to do 16% GDP growth rate on the average mm. for the next um, You can yeah. see how tall yeah. the other is. Do you think it's and unrealistic? That's why because from your analysis right, right. now, I'm understanding you that you need to double. It has to be 100% times two. Yes, it's, uh, times two. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I also think nothing is uh, impo impossible. impossible. Yes, I also think it's um, achievable. But the only way we can achieve that, the problem of fiscal policy, mm. is by, you know, um, spending right. You look at the, 20, uh, the 2024 proposed budget, 27.5 trillion. You find in it a deficit of about 9.8 trillion. Okay, now out of that deficit of about 9.8 trillion, the government is going to do new borrowing of over 7.10, about 7.8 new borrowing. Mm. And out of that 7.8 trillion new borrowing, about 6.2 is domestic. Okay, mm. that's about 78% mm. of the total. Now, the way we borrow, the way we go about borrowing that, the instrument we use to in borrowing that is very important. If we did use infrastructure bonds, for example, it may go a long way. But if we also use the traditional FGM bonds, general obligation bonds that are not tied to projects, we are going to be very far from the target. If you look at our domestic debt profile today by instruments, mm. you'll find that FGM bonds is accounting for about 86%. And when you use FGM bonds to raise money domestically, there's a discretionary feature. It's not tied to projects. You can use the money when you get they the money. They're borrowing money from us. And anything. Yes. Yes. But if you use infrastructure bonds, they are, they found, the process are ring fenced. Why I'm saying this, if you look at that, that our profile, the real infrastructure bond in that is less than 2%. We're talking about Sukuk. Sukuk and Co. And green bonds. Yes. They are less than 2%. Mm -hmm. So except we begin to develop you know, uh, specific segments of our, of our market, when I mean I'm, I'm in a capital, capital market, market, okay, by going to use infrastructure bonds when we are borrowing, we may not meet that target. So for us to meet that target, we have to focus on infrastructure. The National Development Plan has projected them, you know, it's estimating that Which one now? Because the, there's Agenda 2050. No, National Development Plan, the medium, <laughs> okay, you know, okay, the, the medium, 2021, yes, 2025 yes, talks about uh, 348 yes, trillion, yes. you know, requirement. The government will bring just 15%, private sector 85%, mm. uh, all right? Now, that of the government, 
the federal government is actually you know about 29 percent of the 15 percent of the 15 percent okay for that of the federal government oh, oh sorry 2019 that of the federal government okay must be sourced using the right instruments so i keep emphasizing it we have to use the right instruments when we are borrowing otherwise you, your borrowing will be inflationary your borrowing will end up compounding the whole uh, did you see a breakdown situation. of that in 2024's budget in terms of these new borrowings did yes. You, did you see some kind of clarity from? I, yes, from it that? simply says uh, mm. domestic borrowing six point two. Yes. Two, what, yeah. what have we been doing in the past? Mm. Remember in the past. So that means we will go back past, to what we used to do. In the past, it, it didn't used to be uh, evenly divided. In the past, mm. you would hear domestic borrowing fifty percent, you know, current borrowing fifty percent. Mm. But this time around, domestic borrowing is seventy eight percent. Foreign borrowing is very little. Okay. So it's important that we use the right instrument. Otherwise, we we'll end up. You know, because the more government is borrowing from the domestic economy, the more interest rates are being driven up, okay? And the more you're also stifling, you know, uh, uh, production, yeah. uh, all right? Mm -hmm. Again, that's where monetary policy com you know, yeah. is, you know, comes in. You can see what the central bank is trying to do now, trying to, you know, the, you know, said want to further tighten monetary policy because of the exchange rate uh, situation mm -hmm. and also because of the, you know, um, to, to rain in, rain rain inflation. inflation. But okay. of course... That will also have its um, adverse consequences, unintended consequences. Now, All right. Let's dig deeper into monetary policy. Since we're discussing, we're, we've talked a, a bit about fiscal and a bit of monetary, but I want us to dwell a bit on monetary now. Vis-a-vis yeah. -vis Cardoso's speech, I don't know what you make about it at the CIBN oh, yes. uh, yeah. event. You're yeah. also part of yes. CIBN. Yes. Well, I don't know if you were there in Lagos. Yes. But if we drill down to Cardoso's speech, yes. With the posture of the CBN now, I was trying to explain to our viewers, which day was that? Was it this Tuesday when I was talking about the uh, 21st budget? Yeah. And I brought in the part of the CBN in terms of the posture of the CBN now being orthodox. So I tried to explain to our yes. viewers, orthodox is like Catholic Church and Anglican. <laughs> <laughs> that is the, <laughs> that is the way. Yes. Or if you have it yeah. in Islam, you know the most traditional. Oh yes. <laughs> or like the Pentecostal style yes. we had before. Yes. So a lot of people thought, oh, I was able to understand what you were saying. <laughs> yes. You know. So if you take a look at the uh, the orthodox style of yes. Cardoso yes. now, yes. as against the president Tinubu that wants to spend, because his budget is a spending. Oh yes. A, a budget as against. The stagflation that we are suffering. Exactly. Forget I like that word, stagflation. That, that's yes. Exactly. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You're a prof now. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm representing. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> you yes. know? So yes. if you take a look at all these scenarios, yes. I'm just sitting down, and even with this, my glasses, I'm like, what exactly is happening? What exactly is happening? Yes. Yes, you can ask that question again. You see, the uh, traditional... Um, you know, monetary policy, you talked about the orthodox. So th these are uh, policies that are hinged on, in, in a theory, we, we, we say the quantity theory of money. Mm. You know, the quantity theory of money that says it is because, uh, you know, you have so much money in circulation, that is why you have inflation, okay? Uh, inflation is a function of money supply. Yeah. That is the quantity theory. So the central bank is uh, concerned about money supply. So the, is, is, uh, the central bank governor, Okay, his new stance mm -hmm. is that, you know, he will do everything, you know, within his um, power to focus on, um, um, you know, that tightening monetary policy. Mm -hmm. You know, he could use the term inflation targeting. Yes, yes. I was coming to that. Yes, the, for the 2024 budget, if you recall, inflation has been projected at, um, to come 21. in at 21.4. Yes. But, but so what that means is that the central bank will use the policy tools at its disposal to now ensure that that target is, is met. And part of which is tightening. You're already hearing of um, you know, Naira scarcity. Mm. That's also because of um, the fact that there is the impression that so much money is still, you know, money supply is, if it's the broad money supply, is currency in circulation plus savings plus, uh, you know, time plus demand deposit. So the C part of it, there's the impression that currency in supply is also, you know, huge. So they want to also mm. um, reduce, yeah. reduce that. Okay. But as I said earlier on, all of that will eventually go to shoot up interest rates, mm. okay? You see, there was something he said in his speech, the governor said in his speech, which I don't quite, um, you know, uh, you know um, see as a possibility. He was talking about achieving a low interest rate environment, achieving a low um, stable um, ex exchange rate, and also um, a low um, you know, interest rate, exchange rate, and the inflation. That is, that is not possible. Thank you. Yeah. 
you Achieving have also, three at the same time? Okay. Yes, you have also used the, the right word, oh, po really? policy <laughs> trilemma. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So central banks face this policy tri yeah. trilemma, okay? Yeah. So one it is of course one must give. And yes. usually what is giving way now is interest rates are going to rise. The more you tighten policy to mm. bring down inflation, interest rate will rise. Mm. I know the implication of rising in in interest rate. Number one, I think the cost of servicing um, government debt will also increase. So the debt service to revenue ratio we are projecting now may not materialize. Mm. A major, let me quickly say this, a major challenge we have in the 2024 budget proposal is this exchange rate of 750 that we are using. Mm. Okay, it is not, um, you know, one is not being pessimistic, but it's not likely to you know, you know, mat materialize. Already you have heard the central banks even adjusting the, even the official exchange rate to be able to close the private market premium. Okay, so for me, what is the way forward? It looks crazy, but I, I keep making this uh, suggestion. The government appears to be focusing on the supply side of the market, trying to get dollars to calm the market. Mm. But not much is being done on the demand side. Even if you bring the dollars, you manage to borrow from the banks, or you manage to get from assets, and the money comes, okay? If you don't deal with the demand side, the problem will still be there. Okay, Pop, yes. we have about three minutes to go, and I have so many questions to still ask you. And it's just unfortunate that this one hour just yes, goes... You, you took my time. You know, I thought I was going to do a one hour. Program. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 I had another issue to <laughs> yes. look at. You know, because I have a yes. lot that I'm dealing with. It's yes. like I'm chasing so many yes. Yes. issues at the same time, you know. But let me ask you this question. Dovetailing from what the central bank says it wants to do now, which is inflation targeting. Yes. Before, they used to do like what we call monetary targeting, which is about quantity of money. Yeah. Now, how, how, how much of a big shift will you see from monetary targeting to inflationary targeting? What kind of, for me, I'm looking at it like a shock will be sent to the system. Absolutely. Do you understand? In terms yeah. of that radical shift. So yeah. how should this be balanced from a monetary targeting in terms of the quantity of money we've seen all that happened in the past few years to inflation targeting, which is about price? Yes. Uh, the, uh, the truth of the matter is that if you look at the framework for you know, monetary policy, really, you have um, what, what we call the, um, the, the intermediate target. The intermediate target of monetary policy is actually the, um, you know, the money supply, all right? The, the broad money, that's the inter intermediate target. And then you have the final target, okay? The, uh, by the way, you also have the operational target. The operational target of monetary policy is the reserve money. Mm. Then you have the intermediate target, which is the, mon you know, the um, money supply. And then you have the final target. So in this case, the final the said central bank is saying its final target is, in, um, is inflation. Unlike the previously, when the final target you know, um, you know, would be inflation and output. So the, the central bank would also be concerned in what is happening in the output. And what, you know, that was also what drove the, uh, all the efforts we saw in the development finance space in the previous administration, because they were also mm. a bit concerned you know, with output. Mm. But this person is saying, this new one is saying, no, my focus is just on, uh, on, on inflation. And I'm mm. saying, just as you rightly pointed out, it is really going to be, that transition, you know, is, is really you know, um, going to be, um, you know, sudden, you know, in, in a way. Exactly. I, don't, I don't advise the central bank to completely ignore, you know, aspects of, um, aspects to do with output, okay? Because they go together. The more you focus on inflation, especially given the fact that inflation drivers in Nigeria... Are supply... Uh, are supply, supply side. Supply side, which fiscal okay? policy has to fix. Uh, exactly. I was coming to that. Exactly. So, so if, if, if that is not taken into cognizance, mm. you end up hurting output. Okay. Look at the rate at which we are growing. Exactly. That's GDP figure just 2.54%, mm. okay? Very weak... Um, Growth. So we need to also, you know, take pay attention to growth, much yeah. as we are also um, looking at inflation. There has to be a, a balance. A balance, to strike exactly. A balance between inflation. And achieving that balance is a lot. Uh, yes. It has to do a lot with and thinking. the coordination between the Co fiscal and yes, monetary coordination. policy. Yes. President Buhari couldn't achieve a GDP growth of 3.75 percent. He yes. said for himself. Yes. Tinubu has said 3.76 percent. Yes. Let's see how. 76%, percent yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank Let's you. do this again. Oh, we, shall, we, shall we will surely do this. Okay. In case I don't get to see you yes. before the end of the year, I wish Christmas. you a Merry Christmas. Thank you. And a happy